My name is Julia Voss. I'm also a member of the jury. I'm an art historian and historian of science by training and I work as an editor at the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung here in Frankfurt. The other book we have chosen for a prize is Willibald Sauerländer's Der Katholische Rubens, The Catholic Rubens, and it is indeed a very unusual book. You would wonder, is there anything new you could say about someone like Rubens? Rubens belongs to the most celebrated artists in art history, and Sauerländer sets out with an interesting observation. He says that modern art history had paid a price for the fact that they have sheltered, um, that they have selected Rubens as one of their most famous protagonists. And the price was that they wouldn't talk about what Rubens was really interested about. The fact namely that Rubens was indeed a Catholic, if you want, propaganda painter. And what we witness in this book, on the 300 pages, it's not really thick, um, through Rubens' work as a painter for the Catholic Church. Modern art history had seen in him someone who was painting about passions, but also someone who would um, be very political, who would actually um, be at the courts and talk to the kings. And um, Modern art history had portrayed Rubens as an ambassador, which is true, but they wouldn't really like to talk about the fact that Rubens was also very much into um, um, working for the Catholic Church. He himself was born in Siegen, his family was from Antwerpen, and Antwerpen, what happened in Antwerpen was that the iconoclasts had destroyed the churches and the images in the churches already. And in this vacuum, Rubens would paint his paintings of martyrdom, of um, the saints, of Holy Mary. Um, and so he would portray the figures that had been especially in the focus of the people who had destroyed the images before. And Rubens wanted to convince his audience, A, of um, the truth of these happenings and say martyrdom is something that really happens and um, wonder is something we have to believe in and really sort of convert his audience back to the belief of the Catholic Church. And he, he was the painter of the Tridentine um, treaty. Yeah. Uh, uh, Post-Tridentine uh, uh, aesthetics. Yes. Uh, which completely changed uh, the outlook on, uh, on painting, on, on, on sculpture, etc, etc. Yeah. I think this is very important because it's, it's, uh, it's a great difference to Protestant painting. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, maybe to give an example, his painting of Justus von Bovey. Justus von Bovey was a martyr um, who died for his faith and the legend says that his head was chopped off. But what happened, due to the legend, is that he would not only catch the head in his hands, but the head was still talking and it would beg that his head would be brought to his mother. And this is indeed a very, on the one hand, uh, brutal scene, on the other hand also modern viewers have difficulties to believe that. Mm -hmm. And Rubens on the one hand would portray this scene with all the brutality that's in there. So you, you would see how the head was chopped off, you would see how the body is already stiff because it's dying, and how the, um, and how the tongue, tongue is moving in his mouth. And on the other hand, he would... So in the center of his picture would be the faith in wonder. And he would try to convince his viewer, A, of the truth of that, what happened, and B, that he should follow this church who would believe in that kind of wonder. So he would have a realism and also um, a kind of drasticism um, in order to convince his viewers. And Sauerländer takes an interesting perspective on that. Um, he himself is a Protestant or comes from a Protestant family and he has a kind of distance to these paintings saying that the kind of belief Ruben 
Jesus is following is something that is that he is skeptical about. But the more so, he, I think he is the the best interpreter of these paintings because he has this distance in order to bring out the kind of Catholic message that's in there. And Sauerländer himself is not unknown to art history, to the contrary. He has taught as a professor in Freiburg. He was for a long time the head or the director of the Central Institut of für Kunstgeschichte in Munich. And now, in his late days, he has written a book about someone he hadn't written before, about Rubens, and I think the, the best is for the reader. Uh, Sauerländer is astonishing. I mean, he's an old man. He, he must be in his 80s now. And he constantly visits exhibitions of, of uh, modern uh, uh, painters, sculptors, etc. Et and writes about them. And at the same time, going back to Rubens, which he hadn't done before, because he was a medieval uh, spe specialist of medieval art, etc. Et et Actually, there is another Protestant who wrote a famous um, a book on Rubens. Uh, this is Jakob Burkhardt. Yes. Um, uh, as he, he placed or positioned uh, Rubens against Rembrandt. Yes. Because in the 19th century everybody wrote about Rembrandt uh, as the peak of, of painting and they said, no, it's Rubens. And, and he wrote that from a Protestant standpoint. Yeah. So it's interesting that this is repeated with, uh, with some of that. True, there is a tradition mm -hmm. of Protestants around yeah, writing yeah, 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 about yeah, yeah. the Catholic Rubens. Mm -hmm. What are the aspects under which um, scholars wrote about uh, Rubens so far. Yeah, you would wonder if there's anything new you could yeah. say about him. Mm -hmm. And indeed, if you look in the literature, you could see that Rubens has been extensively described as an ambassador between the international courts. We know also that he was um, the scholar, if you want to say so, if you would like to say so, among the artists in his time, so he would read a lot and was very knowledgeable about the literary sources of his paintings, so that is also known. And also, it has been much reflected that he was an early entrepreneur um, in the art world. He had a studio and several people working for him. And so all these aspects have been reflected a lot in art history. But Sauerländer sets out to say something new, and that is the Catholic Rubens, and if you wish so, you could say that he describes him, in contrast to that, as a propaganda painter yeah. for the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm.